Hello, my name's Phil Gilhooley, and I'm one of the lecturers in forensic science at Liverpool John Moores University. My background is in operational police work. Until 2007, I was the officer in charge of the Fingerprint Bureau at Merseyside Police. People will have witnessed many times um, crime scene investigators at crime, scene, crime scenes examining articles for fingerprints using conventional methods such as an aluminium powder and a suitable fingerprint brush, in this case, what we call a Zephyr brush. Um, this is particularly useful for examining articles that obviously can't be removed from the scene. However, modern methods and new technology allow us to um, examine most articles at a crime scene, but obviously that means we have to remove them to the chemical laboratory, usually in the fingerprint bureau of, of a police force, and we have many, many chemical techniques now used to develop, de develop fingerprints on articles that we would never have examined before. I'm now going to demonstrate how a crime scene investigator would powder a mark on a window at a crime scene and hopefully develop some finger impressions on it and how we remove those fingerprints in order to send them to the fingerprint bureau with the hope that they will identify them. The equipment I'm going to use for this, for this demonstration is, as I mentioned before, a Zephyr brush. I also have some aluminium powder. I'm then going to lift the fingerprints that I develop onto suitable adhesive tape, which I'm then going to place onto a vinyl sheet. This sheet then will contain the fingerprints themselves, and they will then be forwarded to the finger fingerprint bureau in that format. One of the, the other vital pieces of equipment now when a crime scene investigator is powering for fingerprints is that they should use a suitable mask. With the advantages in technology such as DNA examination, it's important that a crime scene investigator doesn't leave their DNA on an object which they're powdering. First of all, we load, load the brush with, with suitable powder. knock any surplus powder off the brush. We then use, we start off at the top of the article that we're examining. The reason we start at the top is we can then remove any excess, excess powder when we get to the bottom. We then discover some finger impressions which have been left possibly by an offender going through this window. And up until now, these fingerprints have been termed latent. And all latent means is that it's hidden and we need to disclose them using the powder. Another important part is that in the finger impressions we remove all the excess powder from the fingerprints because we want to disclose as much ridge detail without any excess powder within the ridges. So there we have the finger impressions that have been developed. We then break off a piece of the sellotape making sure that we don't leave our, our, our own fingerprints on the tape. We then template the tape so that we make sure that we get all the finger impressions. We put the tape on at the right angle to recover all the impressions. We then anchor the tape one side, being careful and we have to ensure what we're, we're trying to do is to lift all the impressions without getting any bubbles or creases in the tape. We then remove the tape, which you, know, you can now see contains the fingerprints that were on the window, but it also gives the, leaves the impressions on the window also. It's impossible to age when fingerprints are left at a crime scene, there's no scientific way of saying when or how long they will, ago they were left. 
but an indication is when they lift readily like that. The fingerprints haven't dried out fully and they lift readily onto the tape. The tape is now going to be placed on the piece of rigid clear vinyl that we've prepared earlier. Again, we template it to make sure it goes onto the, the tape. And it's a reverse of putting it down. So again, what we want to do is end up with no bubbles on the vinyl. We then remove the pieces of tape, the excess tape. And now we're left with a piece of vinyl which shows the fingerprints that we've lifted off the window, hopefully left by the offender. The important part now is to identify those fingerprints against fingerprints on record on the National Fingerprint Identification Database. The most important point regarding this process is that the crime scene invest investigator must annotate this foil to show where the foil was coming, where the fingerprints were coming from, the date that they came from, whereabouts in the premises they came from, and most importantly, a clear reference mark and signature and date to indicate to them in the future that that is indeed the lift that they took from the crime scene. We annotate, annotate the fingerprint lift with the address, Way. where it was, so it was on the window, ground floor, the address we put on top, the date, the reference mark, which in, my, in this case my name is Phil Gilhooley, so it would be my initials. And if that was the first lift that I'd taken from these premises, it would, the reference number would be PG1. We also put the date and the time is 11.15 a.m. And that then gives you, gives you a clear indication of where that mark was lifted from.